Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. In this video with the Playwright Tab Script, we are going to talk about how to authenticate a specific application. You must have seen this example that whenever we hit this URL, we are getting one authentication pop-up. So I'm talking about this authentication pop-up. Let's say I'll open this and then username, password, we have to enter it here. So this is not a JavaScript alert or kind of thing. This is called authentication pop-up. It's coming from the browser. It says you have to give me the username password, then only we can authenticate. And it's not giving me any login page here. So it's a kind of auth pop-up we are getting. And when I enter the actual username password, then only I will be able to log in. So if I don't enter anything, so let's see if I don't enter anything, click on cancel. It says you are not authorized here. And let's, when I enter the right username password, let's see admin, admin is the right username password for this. And then we are getting that congratulation, you must have the proper credentials. So how exactly we can do the same thing with Playwright as well. So there are two things we can do here is uh, with the, along with the URL itself, we can pass the username password. So see this, I'm passing admin colon admin is the username password and at the rate also you have to write before the domain name. So your domain name is whatever abc.com. From here to here, this is your domain name. If you're using some other application, you can use according to that domain name and then whatever the basic auth and after HTTPS colon two forward slash, we have to use your username and the password colon separated here. And after that, if I run this program once again, so let's see what happens. So this time see it's going to log in and uh, it is not asking me any authentication pop-up here. And it says that, congratulations, you must have the proper credentials here and my test will be passed here. But if I don't pass this particular string here or username password here, and then I'm going to uh, run it again, then it will be failed. So let me just quickly run it again and then let's see what happens here. So see, it's running again and it will try to enter the username. I mean, it will try to enter the URL and immediately is giving me the error here it says that auth test failed and it says invalid authentication credentials over here. So how to solve this? That is the first example that I've already given that you could just simply pass the username password along with the URL. But try to understand one thing that is it a good practice? You're writing your hard coded values here or passing along with the URL. First of all, we need to understand that how exactly it is actually working. So for that, I'll show you the same this URL with the postman and then it's a kind of base authentication. So if you understand the basic authentication concept in the API, see, let me just quickly do that, that this is, let's see, by uh, URL here, I'll go to the authorization. This is my postman actually. And then I'll go to basic auth. So basic auth is a very simplest kind of auth where we just need to supply the username and the password. Let's see admin and admin that I'm supplying it here. And when I hit this particular API URL, and then the response we are getting that uh, response is 200. And then we are getting the same message here that congratulations, you must have the proper credentials, right? So if I see the console logs, and if I see that in the background, what kind of request headers it is actually passing. So you see that one authorization and it's a kind of basic authentication it is passing. But along with that, we are getting this base 64 string also here. It means your username password is not getting exposed here. It is actually converting your username password into the base 64 string. So internally, which method browser is using or which method is used in the postman also to convert this admin admin to this base 64. There is one method that is called B2A method. See, I'll show you. You open your browser and let's go to the inspect here and click on console. And then there is just method you need to use it here, that B2A method and B2A, what exactly we are passing in B2A, let's see, we are passing admin and then plus, and then let's see a colon and then plus, and then once again, I'm passing my username. I mean, my password here, whatever it's there, let's see admin. And when I run this and here you see that exactly same string, this is your base 64 string. So base 64 string we are using with the help of this method, B2A method, which will take the normal string parameter and it will give me a base 64 string here. So exactly same thing you can see WT 
y w r t a something w4 equal to w4 equal to exactly same string we are getting it here right so postman also doing the same thing and appending with the basic and then it's going through same thing can we do with the visual studio code with our playwright code also yes that also we can do it instead of passing the username password here so I'll do one thing. I'm just going to quickly create, let's see one variable here. This is my uh, username variable, which is uh, admin here. And uh, here I'm writing another password variable also, which is equal to uh, admin here, right? And then I'll do one thing. I'm going to create one, another constant, let's see authentication header, which is equal to, uh, I'll say that uh, I'm going to use this B2A method. Why we are getting B2A method? It's a JavaScript method. I can directly use here. I don't need to import any separate string for that. And it says that the B2A method says you give me a string. What is the string? The string that we are going to use it here, that username, password, whatever that I have created here, the variable. So let's use this particular variable username. And then I'm going to use this password here as well. And this auth header will give me what? The base 64 string. But what exactly we need? We need basic also along with that. So what exactly I'm going to do it here that I'm going to append with the basic space plus here. I need one space also after basic and whatever the base 64 string for username password that we are getting, we will get it here. And now what I'll do with this page object that we have created this page reference, you just need to use one method here that is called set extra HTTP headers here. And then here as an object that you have to pass, and then you can supply the header information. So what is the header key? The header key is authorization. So we have to use the authorization colon. And what is the value? The value is auth header here, and that's it. Okay. And now with this page, we have associated one header. This is authorization header. And now whenever we are launching this URL, the same header also will be passed while launching this url and after that it will just simple launch the url and it will be authenticated because we are passing this particular authorization header here now let's run it and let's see is it really working or not so i'm running it and then uh, here you see if i'm getting a message here that you are authenticated and not getting any pop-up here it says congratulations you must have the proper credentials so it's not giving me any error here and then in the url i'm not passing any hard-coded username password. Earlier, the approach that we were using, something like this, admin colon admin here, and then at the rate, it might be a problem when you are having, let's see one password, which is having at the rate. So let's say your password is at the rate, admin at the rate one, two, three. Then in that case, this solution will not work because it will assume that your domain is starting after the first at the rate, and then it will be failed here. Because in your domain, you cannot have another at the rate here. So that's what this solution is not great. If your password is having one or username and password is having one at the rate there. So better instead of passing the hard coded value, just simple supply the username password here and then auth header and then append with the basic auth. Tomorrow it can be used with the a bearer token also. Let's see you have uh, some Microsoft authentication or two factor authentication or other type of authentication or let's see OAuth 1.0, 2.0 authentication is required to log into the application. Then you can just get somehow your token from here and then append with the bearer token and then set as a extra HTTP header along with the authorization. Then in that case, then you launch the URL, it will automatically authenticate it here. So in that case, this method, this extra header you can supply here, simple, right? Later on, if you really want to create a separate a function for that, that also you can just simply create it. So for example, let's see, I'll come out of this particular strip and um, I create a function here. So let's see, I'm writing, this is my create uh, auth header, something like this. And this function says that you give me the username and which is kind of, let's see, any type of username and uh, Password again, any type of password that you are uh, using, I'm giving some data type also. And um, whatever the things that we have written, these two things, I just simple copy this and then I'm just going to a uh, simple paste it over here. And then I'm not storing in any reference. 
I'll just simply write one return keyword here and that's it. It means give me the basic auth return here. And now I just need to do what? The authorization will remain same. I don't need to use this particular item number 12 and uh, I can just comment it out and let me call this particular method. The method name is create authentication header. And what we just need to supply. Let's see tomorrow username password is coming from vault or any kind of configuration file or any kind of uh, data file or something. Right now we have hard coded. This is fine. So let's see, this is my username comma the password that I'm supplying it here. And this method will be called username and password will be given here. It will create base 64 string append with the basic and return the overall basic string or base auth string will give it to here. And then the authorization header will be set. After that, I'm going to log in. So like this also simple, create a separate function where you can pass any username password here. Okay, that also we can do it. So let's run it quickly and let's see, is it really working and authenticated or not? So it's getting authenticated. And you can see, yes, congratulations, you must have the proper credentials. Perfect. So this is also working fine here. Now I can try the same thing on other browser also. If you want, we can do it there as well. So let's say instead of uh, using uh, Chromium, I'm just going to use Firefox.launch here. Let me remove the, just a second, let me remove this channel from here. We are running in the headless or non-headless. You can try in both. And let's use with the Firefox and uh, let's quickly run it. So let's see this time, uh, with the Firefox also, it's working or not. So this is the Firefox nightly build getting open and see it's not giving me any error or any kind of authentication pop-up. It says, yes, congratulations, you must have the proper credentials and the test is actually passed here. Perfect. We are getting timeout issue because I have written one uh, because browser is not getting closed immediately. So that's what we have written this. So after 30 seconds, this promise uh, will be expired and then it will give that error the timeout or something, see, after 30,000 milliseconds. So just ignore this. This is not the actual error because of our script. This is coming because of this thing. Anyways, that's simple, ignore that part. But here you can say, yeah, it got authenticated. Same thing if I'm running with the headless mode also. So let's see, headless is equal to true. And then let's see, in that case, is it really authenticated or is giving me the error or not? So here you see that uh, it's not giving me any error. After that, if you really want to capture any string or something, you want to capture this uh, authenticated uh, uh, string here. That is what we are getting. Congratulations. You can capture that as well. But here you see that it's not giving me any error. It means my test got passed here with the headless mode also. Perfect. So I hope this is clear. And uh, just simple use these tricks to authenticate. Ignore this 30,000 milliseconds. <clears throat> okay. So let me just comment it out. See, this is when you comment this line, I'm returning a blank promise here. Prevents your script from exiting the browser. So let's run it again. Okay. See, it's running. It's good. trying to at line number 15 here and trying to launch it. And the test got passed here. No error. Simple. So you can try with the WebKit also or other uh, Chromium and Firefox also. You, we have already seen that. And uh, simple use it, create a simple function, whatever the username password that you are having it now, you can apply it. Don't supply the username password directly in the URL. It's always a bad practice. Thank you so much. That's all this video. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care and God bless you all.